Hello, you are welcome here in my busy little shop. On today's episode of What's on My Workbench, I had a gentleman in my shop the other day and he was asking about the most popular tools I use, where I got them. So I thought that might be an interesting topic to run through. Uh, I'm gonna say my top 10. Uh, there's a couple of tools in some of the groups. So anyway, uh, I'll get started here. So I make a lot of belts and the first place I go to with my belt making is a strap cutter and I purchased this, it's a craft tool. So that came from Tandy. And it does a really good job of cutting straps. Now you can buy an expensive draw knife if you want, but to get started, this is a very handy adjustable strap cutting tool. And I, I've used it to cut <laughs> hundreds, uh, if not close to thousands of straps at this point. So that would be the first tool there. Then uh, if we go down to kind of the progression of making the the tool, the, the belt, or whatever the project is, uh, a knife. Now, I've got some more expensive knives, but I keep using my Stanley knife here. Uh, I do strop the uh, new blade, make it a little bit sharper, but for what I do, it does a really good job of uh, cutting leather. Uh, next along the line would be uh, uh, my divider here that I use to help find the center when I'm doing uh, some custom stitching in the middle of a belt. And it's also a craft tool just because when I was buying my first tools, I was in a Tandy. Uh, the majority of the tools I have here aren't from there because I've upgraded and I'll talk a little bit about that as well. So it's very handy, like I said, for finding the center on belts or to use for layout between holes. Here's a dog collar as an example. So I use it to help find, to put my uh, Chicago screws in here and to lay out the holes there. Then uh, I get into edge tools and I purchased a set of edge tools from Tandy. And I don't know if I just wasn't good at sharpening them at the time, but I've gotten over the Tandy tools. These are from Ron's tools. Uh, Toby there does a fabulous job of making these tools. Uh, they are a splurge, but he gives you a couple of tips on sharpening them, and they just cut amazingly well. My most popular size is the three, which is this one right here. And uh, like I said, they're just fabulous tools, and I enjoy using them. And then um, to get my stitches along the side of the belt, then I use a... Uh, grooving tool along the edge, and I've got a couple of them. I set, I set them a couple different sizes and kind of leave them in one place. This particular one I bought from uh, Eric Lanwerlin out of Indianapolis, and they're not expensive. Um, you can pay for these inexpensive ones. I've, I've paid, I think I paid uh, $12 from this one here. I've paid more for some of the other ones but I don't think I've paid more than like $15 for any of those. The, uh, the mallet of my choice, uh, I started off with one of the Tandy orange or yellow headed plastic mallets and hated it. Uh, it makes a lot of noise. Uh, it's not weighted enough. Uh, it's not very comfortable to use. And so I purchased this um, Barry King uh, mallet. And I think I purchased this one through Weaver. I've purchased quite a few things with Weaver. And, uh, and I've recently, and this one here, just so you know, is a 24 ounce that I bought from them. And, I, and this spring, I happened to be at a show and Barry King had some there and I picked up a 32 ounce, something with a little more heft on it, uh, partially because I've got two workbenches and it's better than chasing them back and forth. So those mallets are really nice. Uh, I prefer those over the uh, a hammer. So then I've got my stitching chisels and by no means were these stitching chisels that I bought from Weaver expensive. I think they were $25.99, uh, spend $100, get free shipping. Um, so I've got a couple different sets, but this is the one I use the most and I've made over 150 belts 
using these to create the stitching holes along the edge. And uh, like I said, I think they do a really good job. Uh, you can see the tines are still nice and straight. I've never had to straighten them. Whenever I'm using those on top of whatever my cutting surface is, I put a piece of leather behind it to back it up so that when I'm driving it through the, say the belt, that it goes into leather behind that. And I think that makes it a lot easier on the tines. So, uh, like I said, I've used a bunch of those. These are five millimeter. I've got a, a four millimeter set and uh, the five I use for the most part. I've got this little square here that I use to help cut square ends on straps and such. Uh, use it to line up if I got a pattern and he's lined up. And it's a small one here. I think that's uh, uh, probably like five inches. And it's just really nice to use here. And I polished up the edges a little bit so I didn't scratch the leather because I, I have had problems with some tools that aren't specifically made for leather putting scratches in it that don't show until you dye it later on. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is a splurge uh, as well. I used, let me go over here and grab it really quick. I used for a long time, and I still use it, uh, just an old ball peen hammer that I had here and I polished up the head on it so it wouldn't leave any marks on the leather. So you don't need to splurge and buy this uh, fancier one here. You can get a ball peen hammer like this. Maybe there's one in your grandfather's tool shed that uh, you can get out and clean up. That's where this one came from. But this one here I purchased, uh, I think it's called Ranch to Arena is the, the website where you go find it. And it's called a tack hammer, and I just really like it. It's, it looks nice. It feels nice. It does a good job. The head's highly polished. I use it as a burnishing tool as well as a hammer. And uh, like I said, I purchased from that. And I think this was, uh, I think it was $100. And I purchased that this uh, uh, last spring as well. Uh, two things then left. Uh, I started off with a set of punches to create the holes. And... I purchased this two years ago from Weaver, and it does a great job of uh, creating the holes. And I like the fact that the holes are all right here, and the way I use it, it seems like it's easier for me to line up where the hole goes, and I just really enjoy using this tool here. And it was not inexpensive. It was from Weaver, and I think it was $150. And then last on hand tools is going to be this pair of scissors here. And you can find these uh, quite a few different places. These are gingers uh, made in Italy. Uh, and they just cut uh, very, very nice. Uh, on a heavy piece of leather, it snips through it like it's thin leather. Uh, I have seen this same set of shears uh, like on Weaver for close to $60. I bought this set from uh, Eric uh, Lan Whirlin in Indianapolis, and they were $24.95. Same ones. Uh, it's the exact same model as the others. Uh, and I purchased it, brought them home. They cut so well. The next time I was in Indianapolis, I bought a backup pair as well. Uh, but they just, they cut really nice. Uh, so with that said, I'm going to walk over here to, uh, looks like we're finally getting some sunshine today. I'm gonna walk over here and talk about one last item. And this is the stitching pony that I have here. This stitching pony is uh, called from Dream Factory, is the brand on it. I purchased this through Rocky Mount, Mountain Leather Supply. And um, I have mixed feelings on it. It does really well for what I wanna do. Um, I, I added some leather here to soften up the uh, the grip on it, the adjustment is here to loosen and tighten it. Uh, I think it does a really pretty good job. If you were hold, using it to hold heavier items in the stitching pony to sew on, the pivot here, this pivot point, I wish it was a little bit more of a sure locking position because if you start wrenching around on the piece of leather that's in the grip, it wants to to move some here. So, but for the smaller items that I typically sew with it, it, it does fine. Anyway, I just thought that maybe uh, to answer this gentleman's question, I would show 
the tools that I use the most, uh, which would be in this collection here. And I and you can get into uh, strap end um, punches, and you can get into bag punches. And there's lots of other tools that you can get into. But this is a good core set that really everything that is here, I can do and replace these. I just like them because it's a little bit quicker for me, but I certainly didn't start off buying those. I was in this range here. I hope this helps. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe, and you're always welcome here in my busy little shop. Have a great day.